Hello, I'm Brent Ferris from the Birdman Studios, and I'm going to show you uh, in this, I guess, playlist, I'll be showing how to do uh, Unity uh, networking, so it's built in. So normally when you think of networking, you think of TCP IP, UDP, OSI model, things like that, um, and you are a little bit overwhelmed by uh, kind of what goes into networking for games, or networking for almost anything, really. Um, so instead of focusing all all this energy on uh, learning these these things for your networking unity has actually built in a pretty nice networking layer that allows you to quickly and abstractly create network games without the real need of deep networking knowledge so some simple things to keep note of for networking um, is tcp is known as reliable uh, the transportation trans transportation control uh, protocol. Uh, it's known as reliable because packages, packets, uh, think of little boxes of information, are sent in order and they each packet waits for the other packets to arrive before they're sent. So uh, they're, they're kind of, it's it can be slower but it's reliable because it waits to make sure every packet is downloaded. So TCP is uh, probably the most common in uh, applications other than games uh, such as I don't know if you download a, a mp3 from uh, uh, the internet or whatever uh, you need all of the bytes for that mp3 otherwise it will sound weird and mangled it won't sound like the actual song uh, and things like that and web when you go to websites it's a TCP connection and things like that so UDP uh, the user datagram protocol is used a lot in games uh, basically because it just shoves its packets across the pipe. Think of it just passing packets. It doesn't wait and listen to make sure that packets are received. And that's where you hear packets get dropped. So the packets will fly across the pipe and sometimes won't get to the other end and they'll just be dropped. Um, we use UDP because uh, we don't care about certain things. Let's say that uh, we don't care about uh, the rotation being 100% reliable in a character because he's going to get another rotation update which is going to override that one anyways. Uh, stuff like that, things that aren't too reliable uh, uh, should be sent over UDP. And UDP is uh, faster than TCP so uh, that's also why we use it in games is uh, frankly we don't care you know if uh, the rotation is skipped because that's just a visual thing or if the animation uh, it is, uh, I guess, delayed or anything like that uh, because uh, they're not really that critical and we just need to get it across the pipe as fast as possible. So, with knowing that basic uh, bit of uh, networking, let's uh, check out Unity and how to set up a basic server. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a script that allows us to have a UI to connect to or host a server. So, I'm going to start off by uh, just creating an empty game object. Let's just make it uh, create empty. Um, I'll just call this, uh, we'll just call it uh, network menu. And we'll create a script. So I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call this network menu. Uh, that was not a folder, by the way. And now I'm going to create a folder called scripts. And I'm going to stick the network menu inside of it. And apply the network menu script to the network menu game object. So we'll double click it, and open it up. And I'll zoom in on this so everyone can see. All right, so there's a couple things that we need for networking. Uh, if you're interested in it, you probably know things like this, like we need an IP and a port number, for example. So we can make those public so we can set them inside of the editor. So we'll just make it public, a string, uh, we'll just call it connection IP. It's equal to, and if you don't know what your local host is, or your own, uh, basically your own machine, local host means your local computer. Uh, there's an IP set for that. Sorry about that. There's an IP set for that. It is uh, 127.0.0.1, and that's uh, Frank. That's your local host. That's your your host computer that you're basically on. The second thing we need is a port number, which is an integer. 
So we'll just create a public int. Uh, we'll call it port number. Uh, and set it to something ridiculous. You want to check your ports to make sure that they don't uh, uh, have conflicts with other ports. So for example, you don't want to set your port to port 80. Uh, because that's the that's the HTTP port that uses for the internet. So if you have a server, it needs port 80 in order to uh, host a web page or whatever. Uh, same thing for 443 for HS uh, uh, for SSL or HTTPS. Um, port 22 is taken by SSH. Uh, port 21 is taken by FTP. So knowing all of these ports that you that you need. Uh, or that you are common in computers is good. Now, what you commonly will do is set your port number to something ridiculously high, <laughs> something like 8,632. Uh, that's a random port number. I'm pretty sure it's not taken. <clears throat> and the reason for this is because if you give this game to your uh, to to your I guess clients, uh, people who are going to be buying your game or playing your game, and they want to host a server, if they have a server that is doing other services and you put you and you try to make your run on the same port you're going to have conflicts so make it something that uh, is ridiculous that no one's probably using on their server uh, so we have our connection ip and our port number and i'm just going to create our ui so we can see it so we'll do uh, private void on gui oops and uh, we'll just we're just going to make this window so that it's easy to type in up here. Uh, so first we're going to make uh, the text box for the uh, uh, connection IP. So it's GUI, not text area, text text field. Uh, and we're going to pass our connection IP into there. Uh, hold on, let me close this thing. It's talking in my ear. Okay. So, and we set our connection IP equal to whatever they input into that field. Secondly, we need the port number. So we'll put uh, port number is equal to GUI layout dot text field, uh, port number. And we need a host and a connect button. So GUI layout dot button. We'll create a connect button first, and uh, we'll create a host button for the second one. So uh, these are going to be if statements as uh, GUI buttons usually are. So we're going to say if GUI button connect, uh, we're going to also say if GUI button host. So if we connect, we do network. Uh, it's a static function, so network dot uh, connect, and it's going to take in your IP and your remote port. So you can just pass in connection IP and uh, port number. And for the host, you're going to do network dot instantiate. Well, not instantiate. Sorry. Uh, initialize server and basically on the initialize server you pass in in connections uh, now now the connections is not how many people can connect to this server uh, you can put two or whatever what this number is is how many people can be asking to join the server at one given time so if it's one no one can ask to join the server while somebody else is already asking so you don't need this number to be ridiculously high uh, I've gotten away with two, but maybe you can do four to six or so. Uh, we can do six. Uh, let's do a power of two just because I'm feeling, I guess, frisky. I don't know. So f we'll do four uh, for our connection request. And we're going to do a listening port, uh, which we made into a string for some weird reason. You guys probably noticed that a long time back. Uh, so turn that into a number. And let's type in a port number into that. So when we click host, it's going to initialize a server that allows four connections uh, to request connections, uh, four connection requests, and uh, it's going to be on this port that we specified. Now, if we are connecting, we're going to connect to the IP that we specified and the port number that uh, we also specified. Now, there's a couple other functions, built-in functions, I have listed out here. Let me scroll this up. 
that come with Unity. Uh, just like the on trigger inner and things like that, there's on surfer, uh, server initialized, on connected to server, on disconnected player from or, uh, on player disconnected, and on disconnected from server. And we can use these to instantiate like uh, player models or uh, various other things that need to happen for individual players. So let's just start off by uh, doing on server initialized and on connected to server. So on server initialized is when the server initializes uh, and on connected to server is when the server has uh, been connected to by a client. So let's do a private void on connected to server. A client has just connected and private void, oh, I spelled that wrong, void on with it server initialize. Yeah. Uh, the server has initialized. Now, in order to make sure that this is working, uh, let's create a something in the GUI that tells us how many connections we have. So, up here at the top, I'm going to say uh, GUI layout dot label uh, connections and let's add in network dot connections dot two string. So this is going to echo out how many connections we currently have. And uh, I want I only want to show this UI when we're not connected to the server. So we can say network dot uh, let's see there's no uh, connected thing. Uh, we can make a boolean to make sure we're connected. Um, so I could have swore there was a there is a boolean for me to check if I was connected. Maybe I'm just not thinking of it at the moment. Alright, well let's just make a uh, Let's just go ahead and uh, make a boolean for it. Actually, I can check my notes. Hold on a second. I'll be right back.